it's five years after the first movie, um, which was a in and of itself, that was a really fun thing to explore, the idea that they've all kind of, they've become very um, accustomed to just not having to be at war all the time. We even discussed maybe the adults like Stoic and Gobber might have gotten really fat. They're just kind of like settling into their old age. Um, we didn't go quite that far, but but the idea was that they would have much more leisure time, that they would enjoy life more, and uh, and it and it does open with a little taste of that before the before the story gets going. Really, Hiccup just simply thinks differently than everybody else. Even though they're 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 all kind of in this place where they can enjoy themselves, most of the other Vikings they're just kind of content to just still be Vikings and live on their little island and enjoy life, and it's sort of expected that Hiccup is going to become the next leader, and, and, the, and everybody else expects this of him. Meanwhile, he just thinks differently, and he wants to explore the world, and he's out kind of mapping their known world and seeing how far it goes in every direction, and, and that's more what he's all about. Is just He's just curious. He's a relentless, restless soul. So he's out looking for the next adventure. They're almost symbiotic. I mean, they really need one another uh, to survive, really. I mean, they're, they're, they've really become sort of soulmates, kind of. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they spend so much time together and they know each other's thought processes. They've got to the point where they can, you know, fall off of one another and trust each other to catch themselves. And they, you know, that, that's been real fun to explore. Well, he's kind of like a, a distilled version of the Vikings from the first movie, you know, where they, they just thought dragons were evil and they wanted to to kill them. He, if you take that, that sentiment and boil it down to its really base level, he's that guy. I mean, he really doesn't like dragons. However, he's a little bit like Hiccup in that he's figured out how to work with them. He's like, he's like a, a dog trainer that trains attack dogs. He, he knows how to get through them in a way that's not the nicest way in the world, but he can make them bend to his will. Um, so yeah, he's, he's a bad dude. I mean, he, he comes at it from this sense of if he can take dragons and use them for his own ends, he might be able to rule the world. Eret is uh, this very self-assured guy that he th he thinks of himself as the most knowledgeable guy about dragons around. So that's that's been fun to play with as a character because he he comes at um, he's a dragon trapper, and he thinks that because he he's studied dragons to such a degree that he knows how to catch them, he knows what what their sort of their weaknesses are. He thinks that he knows more than anybody, but of course he hasn't. He doesn't have any inkling of how deep a connection to dragons can go. So by becoming, sort of falling in with Hiccup and 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 the other teens in the film, he gets to see firsthand just how attached they are to their their dragons, and then he he has a, a change of heart and winds up becoming very close to the dragons as well. It's really fun to to play with how they how they treat each other because. Uh, we still like the idea that Astrid is kind of, um, she's not a girly girl. I mean, she's, she's a tough girl. So to have them in a relationship where, where she will actually slug him once in a while, you know, or they might, they might wind up wrestling or if she doesn't get her way, she might throw him around a bit. It's just kind of a fun thing to play with because it's, it's different, you know. It's not, it's not a run-of-the-mill cartoon relationship. So the Alpha Dragon is, is just... The idea that there's there's this hierarchy in the world of dragons that 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 human beings only are just starting to get an understanding of. Valka has the most understanding of it because she's been living alone with dragons for 20 years or so. Um, but she's learned about this hierarchy and she knows about how how their pecking order works. And uh, and then of course the villain has learned about this as well, but he he uses it to an advantage. He uses it knowing that if he's got the dragon that's at the top of the food chain, he can, you know, control or destroy the others. And he figures it's, it's, a, it's a good weapon to have.